Hi, David Karras here with GuitarBandDVD.org. I am here today with Carl Verhan, and Carl is a first call session player. He's an artist in his own right, and of course he's guitarist with Supertramp. So um, uh, he's, he's had quite a career, and what we're here today to do is to, uh, to check out what he's up to these days, and uh, maybe he can uh, shed some light on what you know, he thinks is uh, important in guitar playing today. So, Carl, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too, David. Thank you for, right. uh, for being interviewed today. I appreciate it. I know you just got off the road after, what, six weeks? Yeah, six weeks in Europe. Wow. It's, it's easier to list the countries I didn't visit uh -huh. this time. Uh -huh. I pretty much went to them all, so it was great fun. Really? That's yeah. great. Yeah. So, what were you doing in Europe? Who were you touring with? Well, I have my own band that includes a guy named Dave Murata on bass, who's actually on my first uh, three or four CDs. And then I have uh, Walfredo Reyes Jr. on drums. This was the guy that's played with Santana for like eight or nine years, and he played with Traffic, and of course Steve Winwood, Lindsey Buckingham, Robbie Robertson, and he's just a, a serious pro. He brings a real fun element to the music too. Mm -hmm. and I've I've, uh, I've used some of the best drummers in the world in this band over the past, and uh, you know they're all great. But I'm just loving playing with Walfredo. He's he's really fun. So we played basically six weeks mm -hmm. with four days off. Whoa! So it was a very manly schedule. <laughs> That's grueling. And then you came back and you had, what, back-to-back -back studio work on a yeah. motion picture, right? Yeah, but there was that. I've been working on a movie called um, uh, Land of the Lost, which is a dinosaur movie with Will Ferrell, kind of funny. Ended up playing, my parts, a lot of my parts said uh, emulate a theremin. Uh-huh. So I said, how do you do that? You know, and the guy was thinking maybe that I might own one of those, those whammy pedals. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, because he's heard that somewhere before. Well, the, the orchestrator. He was, you know, don't you have a pedal that makes it go... Like in the old sci-fi films. Right, right? Yeah. Just for the people that don't know what a theremin is. Yeah, you hear a yeah. theremin at the end of Good Vibrations. Uh -huh. Right, yeah, that's, that's right, yeah. Sound. So um, in, um, I don't have I don't have one of those whammy pedals. I kind of, kind of consider it cheating in a way. Mm -hmm. So instead I have uh, instead I got out my 1956 Supro Dual Tone, which is set up for slide, mm -hmm. and I played all the lines on, on one string, slide style, with a lot of echo and delay and some filter and stuff like that. And mm, cool. Ended up, ended up getting real close, and they said. They said initially they were thinking of putting a theremin on it too, mm -hmm. but now they think the guitar is enough, so that's kind of cool. Great. Yeah. yeah so you really nailed the talent. I think so. I think for. I yeah. got it. Yeah. It was yeah. Fun. That's real creative too to come up with something new. You know, I know traditional guitar parts are great too, yeah. but sometimes just creating a whole new sound is, is something that you need to do as a studio yeah. musician. Especially in the movies, in movies soundtracks, more often not than not, the composer will walk over to you and said, mm -hmm. "Whatever you do, don't make it sound like a guitar." <laughs> here, you know, you've been home all day going, <laughs> trying to get, you know, the perfect Chet Atkins feel or something like that. <laughs> you know, and then you get to the th you get to the studio, and they want you to do, you know do some crazy, weird, high-gain thing with the wang bar or something. And right. So Whatever yeah. you do, don't let it sound like a guitar. Okay. Like right. That, so. But you hired a guitarist, right? That's yeah, right. right. What you call me for? Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> but um, you, I mean, you've certainly done a lot of traditional guitar in a lot of different styles. I mean, mm -hmm. you're sort of a Swiss Army knife of style. Yeah. And, and the difference between what you do and what I hear a lot of other players out there doing is that you really not only nail the, the genre that you're trying to play, but you also do it in a way that is uniquely yours. Oh, okay. Which which I, I really think is, is something that, you know, a lot of people out there, they, they first, of course, everybody wants to sort of emulate their heroes. Mm -hmm. But then, do they get a voice of their own when they're doing something that is, is a specific genre of music? Huh. And, and that isn't something that people always get to do. Right. I think it's something that you really need to strive for. And mm -hmm. I, I 
you know, I certainly think the viewers out there, would, you know, would, well, that's great. If they really listen to your playing, they can really hear that. They can hear it in it through through transcending the styles. Hopefully, that's my goal. But I look at it like this: the styles, every style of music, is simply the same twelve notes, right? Right. right. Sometimes the same five or six notes, mm -hmm. but the ornamentation of the style changes, and that's the way I think about it. I think like if I'm going to play the blues, my ornamentation for the key of G seven. <laughs> And so, so you have the t traditional blues licks that mm -hmm. pull people in and define blues. But if I'm going to play country music, you know, I have the... You know, it's the same notes. Same notes, my Jesus. How'd that happen? Uh -oh. The tuning police are coming. <laughs> right, right, busted, yeah. So anyway, the, 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 the thing you can think about is that yeah. the ornamentation of the style mm -hmm. is what you have to get down. And that just comes from listening. A little transcribing, a little bit of listening, and then mm -hmm. pretty soon you realize, okay, shred guitar has a certain ornamentation, blues, rockabilly, you know, the rockabilly guys have a certain ornamentation. And ornamentation is not only choice of notes, but all those little subtle things like pull-offs and hammer-ons and you know, right hand technique and stuff like that. But it's also sonic stuff too. Mm -hmm. You know, the rockabilly guys are going to set their, their slap back delay, you know, whereas uh, the blues guys are not going to use a delay. You know, so it, it really it really comes down to that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot Lots of stuff about it. And, and the phrasing, I mean, you know, yeah. where you choose to lean into a note or, yeah. or you know, get ahead of the, of the beat a little bit and, you yeah. know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's, uh, it's interesting. Um, I do hear a lot of younger players and uh, trying to play really, really fast. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, you know, if, if you hear it fast and that's the, uh, that's the, the expression from your soul, then that's good. Mm -hmm. If you're just trying to impress people, then it's, it, you know, I can tell a minute in mm -hmm. a second. The other thing about speed that I believe is that so many of the guys, when they go fast, they're not saying anything. You know, they're just mm -hmm. playing. Uh, notes together. My style involves trying to play with using intervals. Mm -hmm. So I believe that for a C minor, you know, that for C minor is more interesting than. I call that like a monkey in a spacesuit lick because you could teach a monkey in a spacesuit to play that real fast in C minor. So the the, the beauty of of uh, of what what well I shouldn't say it this way. I, I think what I'm saying is like when I when I play fast, mm -hmm. I try to make the content just as strong as when I'm playing slow. So you're not hearing me switch to scales. If you think about the guitar, it's it's laid out. In, in scales. I mean, everybody learns their scales. Whether you're learning like the pentatonic. You know, the pentatonic is kind of cool in a way because it has a, a, main, a minor third in it. Mm -hmm. But every other scale that everybody uses is nothing more than half steps and whole steps. So those are the intervals, right? Mm -hmm. To me, half steps and whole steps are cool, but they're not as melodic as some of the bigger intervals. I believe that melody starts to happen when you get into, you know, fifths and maybe uh... So that was thumb on the F, uh, up a minor seventh to the E flat, up a fifth, 